Five people charged in connection with the overdose death of Friends star Matthew Perry. They include Perry's personal assistant and two medical doctors. Matthew Perry's journey began with unscrupulous doctors who abused their position of trust because they saw him as a payday. And it ended with street dealers who sold him ketamine in unmarked files. The head of the Drug Enforcement Agency speaking today about the doctors, friends, and drug dealers that were supplying Matthew Perry with illegal ketamine. Bill Botter was special agent in charge of the DEA's L.A. office. He now serves as managing director of Ravello Investigations and Consulting. He joins me now with more. Thanks for being here on this most significant day when it comes to the death of Matthew Perry. In your long career, you dealt with a lot of drug busts. You even worked the Michael Jackson Correct. case. How does this one compare? I see similarities. In this case, I see a controlled, scheduled drug that was intended for use in a hospital setting. I see it diverted and used at someone's residence, uh, given to someone to use in their residence, where it's really it's so dangerous to use, and you can see the, the results from it. And this is a case of, in my opinion, medical professionals trying to ingratiate themselves to celebrities to be part of the, quote, in crowd. And really, this just scratches the surface of what a problem that is in Hollywood, but then also other places as well, of course. So th there is this problem out there. Yeah, most definitely there is. Um, with the proliferation of social media, social media influencers, that circle of celebrity has grown. Uh, people want to get into that. They want to capitalize on that. And you saw in this case, the allegation at least, is that these doctors wanted to profit from that. They saw someone with money, uh, unfortunately, battling addiction. They thought they could capitalize on that and put a dollar in their pocket. And it was way outside the scope of medical necessity. It was just done for greed. Uh, speaking of greed, I mean, $12, I believe, that the street market value for one vial of ketamine, yet they were charging Matthew Perry $2,000. Unbelievable. Unbelievable just how callous the, uh, this really is. Uh, now, we know that three of them have struck plea deals. Two, really, those in charge of the whole scheme, they are. They were in court today. Mm -hmm. They could face significant time. Significant time. I mean, they are charged in multiple counts. Uh, Sonia, for example, minimum is 10 years. The government alleges that she actually supplied the specific drug that killed Mr. Perry. Uh, sometimes that's a 20-year minimum mandatory charge. In this case, it's not because ketamine is a Schedule Three drug. It's deemed less dangerous than fentanyl, say, or heroin. So still a 10-year charge and, and very significant jail time. Uh, and also, you know, they've connected her to a death in 2019, so she, it's not the first time she's done this. I'm sure you watched today's press conference. I, I, one of the messages that struck me was when one of the officials said, you know, hey, if you're dealing illegal drugs, you're playing roulette with someone's life. Do you think that this will have an impact or... I hope it does. I hope it puts at least this particular crowd, right, this kind of Hollywood designer drug crowd, uh, on notice that mm -hmm. these drugs are extremely dangerous, they cause harm, and if you sell drugs to someone and that causes a death or a great bodily injury, you're going to be held accountable, and hopefully that changes some of the practices in Hollywood. It was about 10 months ago that we lost Matthew Perry in terms of the timeline and the investigation that has ensued since October of 2023. Is this about right, that it does it take this long? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's a very complicated case um, and, you know, requires uh, expert medical review and digging into some of the records that these these doctors supposedly have to keep and you saw one of the allegations was that the doctors actually uh, falsified records after the fact to make it appear that to make it appear that they had this legitimate doctor patient relationship which of course the government alleges they did not have what's the takeaway from all of this you know unfortunately it's that there's people out there uh, you know we, we, we it's a very small percentage right let's make that clear it's a very small percentage of medical professionals that operate outside the ethical boundaries but when they do it can have devastating consequences was that the most surprising thing to you i think it's the most damning thing that there's people like that out there that that will capitalize on someone's fame uh try to profit from it even when they know as the government alleges in this case they knew it was causing harm to mr perry we appreciate you being in here you provide such important context a former uh, special agent in charge dea uh mr bill bodner thanks so much thank you